This is uh, Lance Mechanic. I'm here with Ron Pariello and uh, Ray Felix. And tonight we have a special guest, Daniel Port. Uh, Daniel, um, uh, your background is um, you're into uh, comic book curation. Well, yeah, that's a, certainly the, the most exciting part of it all, I guess. I've uh, been a comic collector for most of my life. And um, several years ago, I, uh, I do a lot of work with uh, large international art fairs, including Art Basel and uh, Scope Art on Titled Art. And so several years ago, it occurred to me that we should be taking uh, comic artists to these major international destinations. And uh, so we've actually been doing that for about six or seven years now. And um, it's been, you know, modestly successful. There's a lot of market for that um, that's done through auctions and a lot, of, there's a lot of private business, a lot of internet business, but there really aren't very many people doing it in that forum. There is a lot of um, referential and uh, what, what's the right word for that? They're, you know, where they're, uh, they, they, they're taking the art and, and they're repurposing it. They, they uh, what, what's the word they use? They, uh, appropriation, mm -hmm. where they will take an artist and uh, somebody will, will throw glitter on it or, or silk screen it a thousand times. And at some interval, it occurred to me that that was crazy. Why not have the original stuff? And how did you get into printing? Well, it was a family business. My great grandfather founded uh, the company that's sort of the legacy of what I do in 1915. And so we do a lot of events. I do a lot of event printing. I do the New York City Marathon. I do a lot of big art uh, institutions, Jazz at Lincoln Center, Wave Hill, uh, places like that. And as I say, over the, t over the course of time, we were doing a lot of art fairs, these large international art fairs that, that make the, you know, the, the, the major international circuit, Art Basel, Miami, here in New York. I do an event in Barbados. Um, and like I said, that there was just a lot of that kind of work. You would walk around these, these fairs and you would see Jack Kirby, you would see you know, John Romita, you would see them all over the place. And then you would speak to the gallerist and they didn't really know who it was. They didn't seem to care, it was Spider-Man. And they were doing it. And as you say, at some point, it occurred to me that that didn't seem right. Plus the fact that why not have the originals? So I have a lot of friends in that business. And one of them who runs a very large fair had suggested to me that he would give me some space and I should try to, uh, to see what I could get done. And we went out and almost immediately had very good success. We brought some Frazettas down. We had Basil Gogo. Uh, we had um, Neil Adams was one of the people that I've worked with on that kind of stuff. And we've been able to, to, to bring this stuff down there. And as I say, you get a lot, of, a lot of selfies. A lot of people really like to see it. It's complicated because the price points are in many circumstances even higher than some of these, you know, some of this art that you're better off buying a silk screen uh, than you are buying an original Ramita. And you have to have people that know what it is but it's a lot of fun to bring it down. I think that we definitely have a lot of people that are very interested and, and like to see it. So that, that gives us a, a good base to build from. And we've been able to move that forward. And as I say, I've sort of parlayed that into a business where we do a lot of work in the Caribbean. I've got a lot of, you know, those types of international people coming through. We're actually working on a book right now for Winston Jordan, who was an extremely well-known cartoonist from Barbados. Uh, we're putting together an anthology of his. He had run a comic strip in the nation for about 15, 20 years and is in the Caribbean is incredibly well known, although here is, of course, an obscurity. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. So you, that's how you um, basically got to work with Neil Adams on like an in international level? All of them. They, I mean, I've very, very few of the artists have not been interested. As soon as you say Art Basel, they're all interested to come. And so we've been very lucky in that respect that they just you know we've been very lucky the dealers is a different story it's a complicated discussion which may not be that interesting mm -hmm. the dealers is different but the artists themselves are incredibly interested they love to do it it's extremely exciting and one of the things particularly for neil is why not he's as good as any of those guys better yeah right. sure. and um i understand that um 
you're planning an anti-capitalism magazine for the yes. show. Right, exactly. Yeah, this is a very good year for that. Sure is, sure is. Well, that was also fortuitous that uh, I discovered that I could purchase the URL, anticapitalist.com. And oh, so, wow. So I did. Yes, it's the most valuable URL I own, you know? Uh, so, I would say it's possibly the, now the most valuable URL, period. Right, well, hopefully. I hope, yeah. I hope so. So, and Ray and I had done uh, the Comic Con this year, mm -hmm. which was a New York Comic Con satellite. And I mm -hmm. think it was a lot of fun. And we expect to do that this year, you know, provided that everything is, is running. Um, and that should be a good one, too. I, I'm excited about it. I think there's a real opportunity. I've been saying for years as a printer that the, mm -hmm. the majors, Marvel and DC, are, are clearly going to abandon the shelves. That there's no doubt that that's what's coming here is, is that they're going, to they're going to continue to contract the lines. And eventually, I think they're going to discover that it, it really doesn't pay for them to be printing too many floppies. and Somebody once said to me many years ago that, you know, the larger the consumer, the bigger the table scraps. And I think there's something to that, that as mm -hmm. these companies begin to struggle and not want to do this stuff, they are going to, you know, leave a lot of room on the shelves. And insofar as there's going to be an industry of comic stores left, I think mm -hmm. that there's going to be shelf space. So why not? Here's a question. Um, DC or Marvel? Gee, you know, I, I'm, the, I'm the worst for these kinds of questions. I don't really have favorites. <laughs> I, I, I yeah, love them both. Um, I, I, Marvel, obviously, I, I, I have a sense we're all the same age, that if you grew up in, you know, late 60s, 70s, it, you know, that Marvel was the one in, in those years, for sure, that, that, that there was something terrific. I'm a New Yorker. They all lived in New York. Right, Captain right. America was always sort of my main guy. But, you know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, I was always Teen Titans over X-Men. That, that mm -hmm. was for me. I always preferred Teen Titans over X-Men. But again, I, I really, I like, I love them both. I love them both. Yeah, what can I say? Yeah, you know? I mean, because to be honest, I mean, even though they were comic book versions, I mean, Superman and Batman basically were like New York characters too. Um, in some regards, Gotham versus, you know. Or Very true. The drop, you know. Um, you know, basically New York was, I mean, with the movies, they seem to want to film them everywhere but New York for some reason, like, uh, That's you know. Probably because uh, money, money. Money, right, the, exactly. I was like, Yeah, because well, the new Batman was being filmed in London and was supposed to move to Liverpool for more filming before it got shut down for a while because of Corona. But I don't even understand it. The most recent Batman, Superman, I guess this Justice League, they went through this whole Fakakta thing where essentially Metropolis and Gotham are on top of each other. Mm -hmm. that, that I don't know where that came from. It doesn't really make any sense. I mean, I like the idea of a mega city, the megalopolis. I love that. But that's a Judge mm -hmm. Dredd thing. That's not really for, mm -hmm. for you know, for... Yeah. for, and for didn't they do something like that with, uh, Knight, uh, with the uh, grown-up version of Robin where he's like basically in Gotham's version of Brooklyn? Right. Yes. Bloodhaven. Yeah. He's like in Bloodhaven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, even better. Yeah. Like it's New Haven, except it's Bloodhaven. Right. Bloodhaven. Yeah. It's like which, uh, ironically, it's about to become for real. Yeah. For tremendous yeah. storyline. The Bloodhaven storyline was a tremendous storyline. The Nightwing and uh, the Outsiders. That he really, it really developed. I personally believe that that Robin is the greatest comic book character of all time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think so. I, you know. A comic book store in the Caribbean. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I can. Well, it's 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 a fledgling operation right now. Uh, we just we just brought down the first round of materials. The store itself is a game store called the Anime Spot, and mm. uh, they do a lot of magic and you know card games and that kind of thing. But there's a huge dearth of this stuff down there, and the audiences are pretty pretty powerful. There's a lot of people that really enjoy this stuff. One of the things that's really interesting, and I just got back, we also do a, a fine art event there that, um, that, that, that features Caribbean artists, a lot of diasporic artists and, and things like that. So we, I was literally just there. I got back last week. And um, one of the things that I think is very funny, I may have told you, Stu, Ray, is so I, I was watching Picard, the new, uh, oh, the new series. Pretty good, by the way. And I'm, an, I'm an old school guy. I'm not a next gen guy. I'm really, a, you know, Kirk, not, not the yeah, no, but, I, but I, I really enjoyed it. So I was watching it and, you know, I'm, I'm going around the island and I'm talking, I'm saying, oh, I'm watching Picard. It's really great. Everybody has seen this show down there. 
Really? And really able well, to see it. change. That if you, if you know the Caribbean and you've been going for as long as I have, this is something, this is an internet thing. That there was a time when you would go to a place like Barbados or Jamaica that they were years behind in terms right. of the movies that they would see or the, or the television that they would watch. That is, it's just simply not the case anymore. I mean, forget about it. They're completely up to speed. They're playing the exact same video games. They're watching the exact same TV shows and mm -hmm. they are really rabid about all of this geek stuff. The Anime Con, yeah. which is the big Comic Con down in Barbados happens in August, the end of August. And I expect for us to be down there again. We've been going for many, many years, brought Mark Tex down. came out of our 10th year in Perkafa, our Caribbean art fair. So I said, why not? So we brought down, I hate to say it, but I know a lot of comic stores that have gone under in the last couple of years. So overstock is, 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 is available. And so we brought down a lot of graphic novels and some floppies and some figurines and things like that. And hopefully we're going to get it moving. Unfortunately, it looked like things were going really well. And now, of course, they're under quarantine also. So, oh, how did gosh. you meet Ray Felix? Jeez, I don't know. How did we meet Ray? I wrong. think we met in a comic book store in uh, yeah, oh, Magnum. Was a, right? Shout Magnum out to Magnum, comics right? peddling my wares, probably. Yeah, probably. yeah. Uh, uh, years ago. Yeah. I'm a Bronx guy, I'm a Bronx yeah, guy. So. Was a, it was a Wednesday, and I think you offered me a drink because that was the only comic book store I knew that actually served beer and yep. and uh. Hot cinnamon whiskey. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That was an yeah. age crowd. You know, they're still, we, we still hang out. That was definitely an adult crowd. Um, and it was a big deal. I mean, it was a lot of fun for everybody to be able to go and have it be. There's a store in Philadelphia. It was an amalgam, is it? That is now a coffee store. She's done so well with it because she sells coffee. She sells donuts. That the, the culture of hanging out is right. is a big part of, of what the comic stores really bring and mm -hmm. and i hope as i say with the one that we're doing in barbados because they do a lot of gaming they play magic they play these cards they have similarly a very regular crowd that's there for an extended period of time mm -hmm. that's you know that it's more than just buying product it's it's culture it's it's community with that anti-capitalism magazine uh, that's on now is that a um what kind of uh, publication is that? Is that graphical or text-based or? It's been a it both, remains right? to be seen. It's a, it's a work in progress. Mm. Our ambition is uh, similarly to a lot of the things that you'll find that, that, that certainly I'm interested in is I'm interested in the void. That as there's more openings, I, I, I think there's opportunities to fill them. And so Mad Magazine, of course, went out just mm. this last year. They were really the last of its kind. I'm sort of sad and disappointed. Um, not not that I was buying it or reading it, right. but you know. But clearly, it was a, a classic national lampoon. Mm -hmm. That that that's more our speed. We are with um, with the Comic Con and some of the other things. We are working with some 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 you know far left organizations that have you know larger political agendas. Um, mm -hmm. And insofar as they can have a sense of humor about things. And, and be interested, then we're happy to have them along. But by and large, anti-capitalist is going to be a a spoof magazine, I think, for the mm -hmm. time being. And we do expect it to be mostly graphics. If somebody wanted to write something that was interesting or sensible, we'll, we'll move into that. But to start with, uh, you know, Ray is working on um, the, the 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 Trump land, the Bronx Zeros in Trump land, which seems to be doing quite well and and has clearly opened up a niche. So we're going to try to fill it. Yeah, they've, uh, yeah, because, um, yeah, with Mad Magazine, I looked, you know, I grew up with it. And um, they brought it, well, they seem to have been bringing it back a few years ago. And it was actually, I read it, I was surprised that some of the old timers were still 
working on it. Definitely. And then I think they, uh, they were still in New York until about a year or two before they went under. And then they moved them to California and got like a new crew there. And it was, the quality good. went down immediately. Mm -hmm. They were using some uh, old, you know, backlog materials, some reprint stuff, and creating new content. Right. It's the, 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 the economics are, are, are very difficult on all this stuff. Yeah. There's no mistaking that. Um, the content is, you know, is hard to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's very expensive. The printing, I can tell you for a fact, is, is, is very costly. Mm -hmm. And once you move to an internet model, the competition is very, very stiff. And I do think, which is not, there's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's a real thing, is that once you move to the internet, unless you're really a powerful juggernaut, you're mm -hmm. getting punched out by this, by two guys on a, with a microphone and an iPhone. That, 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 that they're, you're really, all of a sudden, your humongous operation with enormous expense finds itself competing with two guys in their basement. And really, other than that, you could, you, 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 there's not that much difference. And so you can really get punched out pretty quickly. I mean, the okay. Village Voice, of course, many, many years ago now, contracted first they moved to a free paper and they did that for they hung in there mm -hmm. for you know six or seven years on a free paper mm -hmm. then they tried to move to an internet model it, it's hard it's it's really hard and 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 I, and I don't know i don't think anybody really knows what's going to happen well, with well, all of that uh, yeah with the village voice once they couldn't really monetize those classifieds anymore that was it because yeah, all yeah. the stuff they used to sell like on uh on the classified sections there went to craigslist and stuff 100 like. well, it was like desperately seeking susan at the end of desperately right that's not how they yeah. all met was that they were writing mm -hmm. in the classifieds of the village yeah. voice yeah and, and speaking of desperately seeking susan uh the one who played rosanna arquette's husband in that died of corona yeah, that's right i actually so i'm so i'm so clever i made the click connection i actually wasn't making it but yes indeed that's true that, mm -hmm. that is true he did he passed away today yeah oh, really Rosanna yeah, yeah and then uh, extra credit, he was uh, had a port in Crocodile Dundee too. I mean, in the first Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> That's right. He was the he was the the jilted boyfriend. <laughs> well, I'll bring extent. it back to the to the original art part of this conversation. Mm. Is one of the things that you're starting to see is, of course, is a lot of these nice and very talented, successful young artists. They render everything digitally. And so they don't have that outlet for original art, which is a big part. If you speak to most artists of, of consequence, certainly the ones that we know when we were growing up, part of their economic equation was that somewhere in the middle of that, they were going to get back original art that could then be sold again. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, Fiona Staples, who God help us with Saga, if that stuff was done with pencil and paper, those that original art would be worth something. She's digitally rendering everything. Um, I, I forget the fellow's name who's doing, you know, um, what's it, East to West, is it? Um, it'll come to me in a minute. He's digitally rendering it. everything. That, 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 that so many of these young artists are now, you're doing it digitally. And it, it leaves them out of that original art market. They then try to back in by, you know, sometimes they'll do something, they'll output something, they'll draw something and scan it. You know, they, they try to trick the system, but it, but it isn't the same. It's just not the same. You know, um, the, the Society of Illustrators, uh, unfortunately, also like everything else, has an exhibit up right now about, um, about comic strips, the original strips. And they've got Peanuts and they've got a lot of Dick Tracy, a lot of really great stuff. And I'll tell you, you want to be interested in original art, go look at the comic strips. Those are so amazing. It's some of the greatest art you're ever going to see. The detail, and you can just see it, especially in the original form. You can really get a sense of, of the craftsmanship, of the incredible artistry of all these people. And it, it really adds, in my opinion, to the pleasure of all of that. And it, it's a huge disappointment to me. And I was incredibly, I don't know when I realized that I was already, I guess I was already in the business a little bit. And I started to make the circuit and was like, okay, who are the hot young artists? And one by one, I would meet them. And one by one, they'd be like, yeah, no, I, I digitally render everything. I have a poster, 
They might remarket for you. They'll do um, sketches. And I, sketches is a huge market also. And I know a lot of people that love that stuff. And it's not something that I'm terribly interested in, but it's absolutely, it's, I don't, I'm not discounting it. It's a great market. It's a, it's a fun thing. It's a great hobby. If you're interested in sketching, I mean, it's, it's, it's limitless what you can do. And, and it really is fun, but it's not the same of course, as, as pages from your, your most favorite books. I mean, I'm on so many Facebook uh, chat groups that have people showing off their collections, and it blows your mind to see an original page from things that you read when you grew up. I mean, it's just so much fun. Um, you have any Neil Adams stories for us? <laughs> oh, God, I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know to begin. Let me just say that he's the greatest. I'm completely biased. I not only, Neil, is, I, I love him as a person. He's really just a fun, great individual. He's, he's really, he's really, he's all that and more. You know, all that in a bag of chips is Neil Adams. And I really do believe that he is the greatest artist uh, in comics ever. That we can debate on when you start to throw in the creation stuff and things like that. But pen to paper... I would put Neil Adams up there with anybody. And one story that I will tell you that's pretty funny about Neil is when I first was starting to work with him, I um, had asked him about, you know, what he thought about other artists. Right. So Michelangelo, for example, because again, that's really what we do. We do a lot of fine art stuff. I'm involved with all of that. So I asked him, I said, what, what, do you, what do you think? And he said, he goes, eh, you know, he's just one of the guys. Because right. he really viewed Michelangelo as a work for hire guy, very much the way he views himself. That somebody, he's in fact, he basically went through it. He's like, so what happened? Some guy from the church paid him, he painted the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And that's Neil <laughs> Adams in, in a nutshell. It's certainly no shortage of, uh, of you know, of, of self belief. And he oh, is, um... he's, he's just the greatest artist. The other thing about Neil, which is interesting, and I say this to everybody, especially people who want to be comic artists, Neil Adams never stops drawing. Never. Mm -hmm. Never. You're sitting with Neil Adams. He's drawing the whole time. He actually is now doing these um, auctions on, online on his, on his homepage on Facebook, and everybody should check it out. There are actually some really good deals there, and it's fun. He talks, and, and it's really just a, a pleasure to watch. But he's drawing the whole time that you sit with him, he's drawing. People come in, they, they literally, they'll take a piece of paper out from under him, they'll stick another piece of paper, and he still, he just keeps drawing. He never stops drawing. And it's really, really urgent for people who want to be comic artists. And Ray, you know this. We talk about this all the time. Is, is yeah. that you just, you got to keep working. You got to crank. That's the difference between a comic artist and a pinup drawer or a, right. uh, someone who does commissions. And I understand, and indeed it's really become a problem to some degree, over the last several years, these commissions that people do at the Comic Cons, they really do pay pretty well. And so you yeah. see a lot of very established artists that are now you know, more interested in doing the commissions. They're easier and they pay better. But right. you've got to That's crank. Career if doing you want shows. to do sequential, you gotta crank. And again, in terms of sequential, it's one of the things, I mean, I must have five projects that have basically stalled because the artist can barely crank out a page a month. And it's just, it's just not good enough. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And by the way, it doesn't matter how good the page looks. At some interval, sequential has to be done fast. And the other mm -hmm. thing I will say about artists who are able to do that, and this is one of the great complications in today's society, is a lot of them really do have finishing people they have other people around them they have an anchor that helps them do cleanups that there's a lot of systems that go into it and that's not true for everybody but a lot of artists that really crank quietly have a staff and right. that is what makes it very difficult for up and comings and and people who haven't been quite as successful or if the budget's not quite there is you are under pressure to do the work of three people where someone else may really have somebody there that can help them do some of the finishing help them do some of the cleanups i mean we've all seen those pencils that are like in you know incoherent and then the inker gets it nah it's a masterpiece you know right. so it, it, it's not easy and i'm not i'm not trying to say that it is but obviously, the reality of it is, is if you want to do a monthly book, by the way, you want to do a bi-monthly book, you got to crank. You can't, yeah. you can't be sitting on it that long. And like I said, I, I can't even begin to tell you. It's a horror story. One of, one of the areas that I have not been as successful as I wish I had been is I have several 
comic book projects that have simply stalled because artists just don't move fast enough or at all. And you have to, you just it's have to, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. forget about it, especially you, you talk about people like guy like Charles Schultz, guy's mm -hmm. doing it daily for years. Exactly. His original art wasn't on the market. You really couldn't find it. It was, mm -hmm. it was quite, quite well kept. And then I guess a couple of years ago, the variety of things happened in the ownership. They opened a museum. They, they got involved with some corporate partners. Mm -hmm. And now the market is flooded with, with original Peanuts strips. And they fetch humongous money. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah. and they're worth it. Yeah. They're worth it. Chip did that great book on, on the Peanuts, you know, on Charlie Brown. That was a great Everything book. Everything Chip Kid does is great. Yeah. The best. He really is terrific. Yeah, what's, really what's one of the, the best artists you've worked with uh, in your time doing gallery shows and producing the shows? Who do you think is the Frank top? Frazetta. Frank Frazetta. Frank Frazetta. The thing about Frazetta is Frank Frazetta is unimpeachably great. Mm -hmm. That you put him up with any master, oil paint, I and mean, forget about it. You get close to some of those paintings, mm -hmm. there's no denying that you want to tell me you don't want to see the death dealer or some barbarian with some chicken pasties that's not highbrow enough for you, I I'm not going to debate. But th it is just unimpeachably fantastic. The man was an absolute master, a true genius, a real fabulous painter, amazing technician. And I'll tell you something else. We brought him down to the Scope Art Fair. It's got to be six or seven years ago now. And we had two oil paintings of his, both really terrific. And we had a line out the door, people coming up to me. I had one guy, I swear to God, this year, I had one guy come up to me and he's like, I have goosebumps. He's like, look at my arm. I have goosebumps. And I looked at his arm. He did. He had goosebumps. He's like, I cannot believe I'm so close to this painting that they were just fantastic. And it was really fun for us because that was actually one of our first forays. And because we had the Frazettas, nobody argued that they might have thought it was sort of funny or kitschy or, well, here are the comic book guys. And we did develop ourselves into the, com we're the comic book guys. We're the fun comic book guys. But right. the Frazettas really stuck our flag that we belong there, that we had artists that were just as good as anybody else. And, and nobody could argue. The minute you got anywhere near that thing, you didn't have to be very knowledgeable to see that this man was a genius. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I saw like a document. There was like somebody did a TV show about his will, I believe. Right, yes, there was. Yes, it was uh, Strange Inheritances. Right, yeah, exactly, on uh, Fox yeah. Business, I think. Uh, right. Uh, and even on that, you could just like, when they would show the, I mean, like they look like paintings. They are like paintings. That's a, yeah. These oil paintings, they're unbelievable. Yeah. The yeah, top is, I mean, his sketches are great too. His, 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 his comic book work, his sequential, such as it mm -hmm. was, was really terrific. But, 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 the, but the oil paintings, and that was true for a lot of the pulp artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, obviously, Starenko also, truly great, uh, truly great artist, truly masterful. That mm -hmm. you get close to some of those originals. I mean, they're just fantastic. And Alex Ross, by the way, is another one. Alex Ross, who was a much Amazing. newer artist but Alex Ross is another one that when you get close to his masterpieces to the bigger works that he's done forget it and what makes it really stand with other genres if you will of contemporary art is the fact that because the technique is so powerful, and particularly in, in the guys that we're talking about now, they mostly work in color. So when mm. you see the pieces, they're complete. They're not, you know, non-inked pencils or non-colored inks. That they're 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 finished pieces. It becomes very easy, in my opinion, at any rate, to see just how good these artists are, and it makes my job a lot easier. Because then, as I say, when we stand there at our Basel with, you know, 100,000 people coming through, we are able to, to, to be part of that, that we're able to show that our artists belong there. And, 
and frankly, I, I've never had anybody say otherwise, certainly not in terms of management or, or people that are industry people. That was one of the things that we found with the Frazettas was that the main people that came over and we had people that came and stood there for 45 minutes and just stared at the goddamn thing is that those people almost inevitably were gallerists. They were artists. They were dealers. These were people that really knew the industry that they were, they were, you know, they were involved in the craft. They weren't just fans and they weren't just taking selfies. A lot of times, you know, you might as well, if you're just there to take a selfie, you could just as easily stand next to somebody's silk screen of, of a Ramita. But if you really know your business and you really understand the craft of, of, of drawing and painting and these types of things, there's no shortage of, of great artists. Of course, Frazetta, Alex Ross, particularly Neil Adams is another one that you stand there and you look at his work. You don't have to be a genius. I mean, I always tease him, and it's one of the things that makes him nuts, and a lot of people say, you know, his best work was Ben Casey, you know, the first stuff he ever did. But you look at those Ben Casey's, the man's a genius. There's no question about it. You, and, and by the way, look at the backgrounds. That's one of the things I love about uh, comic strips. I have a Mary Worth that's not really that old and isn't particularly that valuable, but they're on a cruise ship. And the backgrounds are mind blowing. That they're, they're yeah. you know they got a picture of the ship. There, there's the bar in the back. That that I feel, and as you say, you can see that the best in comic strips. In my humble opinion, obviously, um, comic books and and original art like that does it. But for whatever reason, the comic strip, particularly a lot of the um, the, uh, the 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 soap opera style ones, Mary Worth. Uh, uh, what's your what's your face the uh, on 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 camera with um, well, Brenda Starr uh, Brenda Starr absolutely that you look at the backgrounds on some of those things oh man they're just it's just it's just mind boggling and again I just don't think that anybody can look at that and and argue you could say it's not your cup of tea but nobody's going to question the quality or or the craftsmanship of, of these artists all right makes sense makes sense. Uh, did you guys, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Superman versus Batman and uh, the planning of the donation of the Muhammad Ali Superman uh, piece, uh, Neil Adams says, what's the story with that, like the original? Nothing to report on that one right now. Ah. So, yeah, nothing to report. It's, it's, you know, it's still, still in the works. We're, we're, still we're, in the we're works. actually are talking to some people. And, 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 and it's obviously everything sort of stalled out. I think if that's to happen, and I hope that it will, is that that will come in, in, in concert with, we now have some other, one of my other areas is we do a lot of black art, I do a lot of Caribbean art, and I have some, some other artists who are incredibly well-known African-American artists that are also beginning to come into their own. And the one thing I will say about the Ali Superman stuff is, and I love Neil Adams, it's Ali. That, that pushes the, 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 the interest and value on that stuff, that, that clearly Muhammad Ali is, you know, is the greatest of all time. And, and certainly in terms of places like the Smithsonian, they're, they're interested in it for, for those reasons. You know, we're like, if people want to get in touch with you, or is there any website or contact information or? Sure, well, I've got a bunch of websites. My current site for, certainly if you want to buy printing, do your comic book, your posters, those types of things, it's dhpnyc.com. That's my uh, consumer site. I also have onomatopoeia-art.com. That talks about all of our events. I hate to say it, but of course, we're a little bit on hold. My expectation in the upcoming months now is to do some of the Comic Con circuit. Ray and I have provided that it's going to work out. Are going to be be doing some of that. We then, um, you know, we'll be at New York Comic Con. We expect to be satelliting with our Comic Con once again up, the, up right up the block. So everybody should come out and see that. I'll be at Anime Con in Barbados uh, at the end of August. I think that is. It's it's like August twenty seventh or 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 something like that. Did I just lose everybody? No, there I am. And, um, and then we'll be back in at our Basel. We're at the Breakwater Hotel in uh, the first week of December for our Basel. And uh, anybody wants to come check us out then, we, we'll be happy to see you. We've got a lot of different kinds of things going on, but a lot of comic art. And, uh, and then we'll be back around again. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it anytime. All right. Awesome. All right take care. Thanks very much. Take care.